was 13, I decided to boycott palm oil. I had heard about its catastrophic effects on the environment and decided I wanted no part in it. I had heard atrocious stories about everything from deforestation to severe human rights abuses to the killing of native species should they be so unlucky as to wander onto a palm oil plantation. I decided I wanted no part in this, being a little bit self-righteous, highly opinionated, and absolutely convinced that I was a part of the solution. That is, until after about two weeks of boycotting palm oil, I finally caved into eating it again. Which, for me, mostly meant eating Nutella, as it was the only product I knew of that actually had palm oil in it. After doing a bit more research, I realized that boycotting palm oil was not the answer. But how could I go on eating it, knowing the destruction it caused? In today's world, we are constantly being bombarded by the media. The messages that these stories convey can have a profound effect on our perception of the world around us. It is because the media is so highly influential that it can be harmful when we are only exposed to one narrative. Unfortunately, this is typically the case when it comes to our perception of climate change. Climate change is typically portrayed as the fault of the regular individual. When you are being cautioned to reduce how much water you use, ride your bike more often, or skip the straw when you get coffee, you're being fed a narrative that implies you must amend your behavior in order to somehow benefit the environment. Most often, these habits aren't hurting anyone. And the willingness and ability of people to go out of their way in hopes of some way benefiting the environment is inspiring to me. But the same sentiments that drive people to partake in these behaviors can easily be applied to other, more efficient ways of creating change. Presented with this information, many individuals are left feeling helpless and hopeless. But what is encouraging is that we are not without viable solutions. I believe that these solutions lie with intangible change. So what does tangible change mean? For years, I grappled with this concept without quite knowing what was bothering me. I was passionate about the environment and sure that I could change people's minds. But what I was missing was real impacts. I could talk for hours about the abuse of the environment, but at the end of the day, what was I doing to solve it? Turning off the water when I brushed my teeth and tossing my extra pocket change towards causes I believed in did not have any direct effect on me. I wanted to do real work that I could see the direct benefit of. I wanted real impacts in my community. And nothing I was doing at the time did that for me. It was a long time before I could finally find something to satisfy my desire to create tangible change. But when I did, it revolutionized my way of thinking about my role in helping the environment. The first thing that I had to learn is that the solution lies not in convincing a large amount of people to amend their behavior, but rather in looking at who is creating the most emissions and waste and formulating a plan to stop that at its source. When we try to convince a large amount of specific individuals to amend their behavior, it is unlikely we will ever convince 100% of the target audience to change. But by convincing just one corporation to amend their behavior, it affects the employees, the leadership, and most importantly, the consumers of whatever product the company is selling. It is because of this that the public must use their collective voice to push for change and hold corporations accountable. So, Back to the palm oil story. When we had last left off, I had quite miserably failed, and I wasn't expecting to find a solution. The issue of palm oil took the back burner, and I forgot about it for quite some time. It was when I least expected it that I finally found the answer I was looking for. Sustainable palm oil. 
Now I know, I know what you're thinking. It seems kind of contradictory that the solution to all the issues that palm oil is causing is more palm oil. But if you look at how sustainable palm oil is produced, it all begins to make sense. See, the problem that makes attacking palm oil so difficult and specifically so hard to boycott is that, one, it's in everything, from shampoo to packaged bread to lipstick to even some dog foods. Boycotting palm oil is really, really hard to do. And two, when you boycott palm oil, it could prove to be even more harmful. Per acre, palm oil is the highest yielding crop of any oil market on the market today. So when we boycott palm oil, it requires more acres of forest to be cut down and destroyed to create the same amount of oil. When palm oil plantations are built over pre-existing habitat, the chances that conflict between plantation owners and the animals that previously inhabited this area increases. It is because of this simple fact that Chandra, pictured here at the Oregon Zoo, was both injured and orphaned when she and her mother wandered onto a palm oil plantation. Chandra managed to escape despite her injuries and was rehabilitated and transferred to the Oregon Zoo. But many other animals in her same situation are not so lucky. Ensuring that the land we use to farm palm oil is not critical habitat for native species ensures that the need for palm oil is not taking priority over these animals. So sustainable palm oil is good for the environment and the animals, but what about the people involved? Too often, environmental advocacy holds the interests of the environment and animals, or the interests of real life people. But palm oil effectively does both. In order to be certified sustainable, plantation owners must protect the rights of their workers by not engaging in any form of slave, slave labor or child labor. It may seem a pretty basic requirement to many of you, but in the palm oil industry, it's quite often these human rights abuses are rampant. And even steps as small as these ensure that the workers are protected and that we're seeing all sides of this issue much like how the public can help cor hold corporations accountable, legislation can help hold the public accountable by setting guidelines for behavior. In 1963, the bald eagle population of America was decimated by the use of the insecticide DDT. There had been breeding programs, conservation efforts, and advocacy around this subject, and yet, numbers continued to decline. It wasn't until 1972, when the EPA banned DDT, the bald eagle populations began to soar again. But could you imagine having lost our national symbol simply because policymakers were too afraid to create controversial legislation? There are those that say that legislation does not account for those that are willing to break the rules. And while we cannot guarantee that no one breaks the rules, legislation effectively reduces the amount of times that people break these rules and partake in behaviors that disadvantage the earth. The final and most important way of getting involved, if you yourself want to bring about tangible change, is getting involved in local conservation. By getting involved in local conservation efforts, you can better understand the issues affecting your local community. Just two miles from where we are sitting right now sits perhaps Hillsborough's greatest treasure, Jackson Bottom Wetlands. Before the 1900s, Jackson Bottom Wetlands was a thriving ecosystem, lush with native plants, teeming with numerous species of fish nutria, and waterfowl. But 
as Hillsborough began to develop, Jackson Bottom Wetlands became the target of an immense amount of waste. Once pristine pools of water were now marred by pollution and physical garbage, it went on this way for a very long time until a few dedicated volunteers decided to do something about it, decided to get involved. It is because what was at first a few volunteers and has now blossomed into a community of volunteers, the Jackson Bottom Wetlands is home to many native species again. It's a thriving ecosystem, all because a few people cared enough to get involved. Since the day we have been born, we have been told that it is our fault that the world is the way it is today. We are convinced that our simple everyday behaviors will make or break the environment. Will companies that create an astronomical amount of waste escape any semblance of accountability? Though we do have a role to play in protecting our ecosystem, it is most efficient when we work together and think critically about bringing about tangible change. It's not just about us. It's about animals like Chendra. It's about the palm oil plantation workers. It's about our broken communities. It's about coming together to shatter our misconceptions and fight for the action we so desperately need. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk.